Hello, hello, hello. Thanks for joining Dear Alicia, Coffee, and No Tea. This program is brought to you by EarthBlendCoffee.Global. Support our sponsor. If you have a story that you'd like to share or questions, you can either email at DearAlicia2021 at gmail.com or you can always call us live at 1-800-492-5196. This program is about real life stories. So today we do have a letter from someone that lives in Mississippi. Um, I do want to mention that all identities will remain anonymous. So you don't have to feel, you don't have to um, be afraid about, you know, exposing who you are, your name and things like that. It will be, it will remain anonymous. So back to the letter. We have a letter that says, Dear Alicia, I live in Mississippi and I have been dating someone for 13 years. I love her so much like she is my wife and would not do anything to cause her any harm. She has three daughters that are grown and I believe they never really liked me. A situation happened six months ago where she became sick from food poison. They know that I always I am always cooking and cleaning for her because she is sometimes too tired after work. We both work, but her job is a little bit more stressful than mine. We do not live together. She has her own place and I have mine. One weekend we went out to eat and the next day she went out to eat with her friend girl. After that is when she became sick, but her daughters have accused me of trying to take try to take her out. But we had been together for all these years, and not once have I tried to poison her. Why would I even see her as being my Why would I when I see her as being my wife? I also believe her daughters have turned her against me. She will not accept any of my calls, but texts me saying to leave her alone. She's doing fine and has moved on with another man. I prayed about it and started back reading my Bible. It's just, ju it's just devastating to know that after all these years of treating her the way my daddy treated my, mo my mama, she would leave like this. I wanted to marry her, but I guess she just didn't want a good man. Sincerely, Mississippi. So, Mississippi, all I can say is sometimes God intervenes. You know, you said you prayed about it. Um, you started back reading your Bible, and you became devastating. But sometimes God can see a far, well, not sometimes, but God can see ahead of our situations or where we're going because he knows our beginning, middle, and end. And a lot of times when we think that it's good, when we think that something is good for us, it's really not. Now, as far as her kids turning her against you and everything, um, it seems like you know, you all had, you said you all had been together for 13 years, but it seems as if she really didn't have the same feelings that you had for her. And so, to be honest, you know, sometimes we have to kind of count, count it as a loss. Uh, it's kind of hard to say, but, you know, we have to ask the Lord to heal our wounds from past hurts and things like that, so that you will not go into the next situation, you know, next relationship with be, uh, baggage. Um, but I will say the word of God says that uh, um, when a man findeth a wife, he findeth a good thing. So my advice would be is go back and pray. Let the Lord know what type of woman that you that you want to marry. Because I believe that because you have a desire to be married, that you're meant to be married. You just have to find the one that God created for you um, when you were born. Because she's out there, you just have to pray, trust God, and draw closer to Him in your relationship. Work on your work on you first, and allow God to do the rest. Another thing that I like to mention is the food poison thing. You know, to me, it sounds like she kind of used it as an excuse, and kind of like behind the scenes, she was always she was having conversations with her daughters about you anyway. So there's things that were hitting that you did not know, you know, that, that, that was discussed concerning you. And it's almost like an escape goat. You know, it's kind of a way for her to escape the relationship that you all were in. You know, and it's also, I mean, it could be, you know, she, she had this other man, you know, on the side anyway. 
You know, it could have been she's in a relationship with you and in, in one with him as well because sounds like to me he, you know, she kind of picked up on that second relationship kind of fast. So it gives me the idea to think that she was already in a relationship with the guy. And by the daughters, by you saying that the daughters, you felt like the daughters really never liked you, it gave them the opportunity to, to really um, to really work that, you know, to make it easier to push you really out of the way. Um, but I will not, if I was you, I wouldn't just continue to dwell on it. Like I said, I will pray about it. I will um, ask the Lord to heal me from the hurt because you all were together for a long time. And so just take everything in prayer, you know, and come back. Email email us back or call us on live. Give us an update on how you are, how you're doing, because, you know, we care about, I care about how, how you're doing. I care about your feelings. The Lord cares about your feelings. And if you need, you know, anything else to talk about, anything else to talk about, feel free to email or call us live. Um, <clears throat> I will say also, you know, when you said that I prayed about it and started back reading my Bible, find you some scriptures that will also help you with the healing of your soul. You know, ask the Holy Spirit to help and lead and guide you in prayer and just trust and believe that um, that the Lord will direct their path. You got to have faith because you do not want to go into another relationship carrying all that weight and baggage because you would treat the next woman you will look at the next woman the same way you see this woman here. You know, just pray for her. Ask the Lord to bless her in her relationship. And in the same time, ask the Lord to bless you in your new relationship with him first and then another woman. Well, your wife. So thanks for joining, dear Alicia Coffee No Tea. This program is brought to you by EarthblendCoffee.Global. Support our sponsor and we will be right back. Welcome back, and thanks again for joining Dear Alicia Coffee No Tea. This program is brought to you by EarthBlendCoffee.Global. Support our sponsor. So where we left off, we've already read one email. We have another email to read. Um, Dear Alicia, I am 34 years old, and I live in the Deep South. My boyfriend and I have been together off and on for two years. I live with him off and on during our relationship. I think he might be cheating on me, but I do not have any hard proof. The way he treats me gives me the reason to believe there is someone else in the picture. We recently broke up because of an argument I thought wasn't even that serious. So I packed up and moved out again for the eighth time. But just a week and a half ago, he called me apologizing for the disagreement we had, and he said he wanted to try and work things out. So again, I believed him and we talked and things seemed to be back on the right track. Except last week, I moved my things back into his place and helped him with a few of his bills that needed to be taken care of. Out of the blue, we had another argument. I told him I just can't do this any longer. He told me he was going to help me pack and move my things back and we will talk about this later. Do you think he is cheating and what shall I do? Thanks. Okay, so Deep South, um, first of all, I want to say this, you have to, you first of all, you have to step back and you have to look at the relationship. First, you need to look at yourself. You need to, you know, ask yourself, do you love yourself first? We have to love ourselves before we try to love 
someone else because the way we treat ourselves is really how the next person is going to treat us. So I want to talk, I want to expound on um, when you said that you've been in a relationship with him for two years, off and on during relationship, and how you believe that he's cheating on you. First of all, you don't have any hard proof. But it sounds like he could be he could be cheating on you and he's just not, you know, he's just not really feeling the relationship. You really, you really, really need to um let's see what I want to say. You really you just really need to ask yourself, you really need to sit down and talk to him and see what it is that he's looking for in a relationship and let him know what it is that you're looking for in a relationship. Um you know, you, you know, you need to know if you want to get married or if he wants to get married because going on, you know, for the eighth time, it really doesn't need to be a ninth time because, you know, it's, it's devastating to you. You know, you want to be happy. You want to, you want to, you want to be happy. You want to be in love. You want to have a good relationship and you want to most of all have that trust in your relationship because if you have no trust, there is really no relationship. So, um, this coming back, talking, and then you believe in him and you going back to him and then things are just really crumbling, you know, going back the same way. It's like a cycle that needs to be broken. And the question is that you, that I believe that you need to ask yourself is, do you love yourself enough to not go through these things? Because like I said, if you love yourself you know, you will have like a higher standards. Um, know your worth. You are a woman. You know, you were fearfully and wonderfully made, created in Christ, in the likenesses of the Lord. And you really have to know your value. We as women are very precious and we are to, you know, love ourselves enough and to respect ourselves enough that we may be respected as well. Um, as far as moving in and moving out, to be honest, I will be tired. That's kind of tires. I mean, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of a big, big deal. It's kind of hard to keep moving in and moving out. You know, I just really believe that you should just stay in your dwelling and let him stay in his dwelling. Uh, when it comes down to the bills that need to be taken care of, um, he's a grown man. You didn't state how old he was, but he's grown. He's grown. And he should have his own job. He should be able to take care of his own bills. Because let's say you all were to get married and this relationship is kind of unhealthy the way it is. You know, you got to think about how stressed out you would be in the relationship because really he is the, he's supposed to be the breadwinner and you're supposed to be the meat, the helper. But if you are the breadwinner and the helper, I mean, what is it left for him to do? So you kind of want to, you kind of want to have that relationship where he's the man, you know, um, and he's taking care of his own bills because, you know, if you did get into a household, if you did have a household with him together, um, like I say, it would be just a headache. I mean, I've seen past relationships where it's like that and it kind of stems from where, you know, this person, how they grew how they were brought up, you know, if they were brought up in a household where their mother took care of the bills and their daddy kind of do what they wanted to do, you kind of, you know, kind of repeat is the cycle kind, kind of repeats itself and it needs to be broken because that is not how we were designed to be. We were designed as women to be wives, first of all, and to be helpmates to our husbands. Um, like I said, our husbands were meant to be our covering and to be the man of the, the head of the household. Um, you know, reading on down where you said that, that all of, you know, after you pay for the, after you pay his bills and then another argument started out of the blue. I mean, it kind of, it kind of makes me wonder, you know, is he using you to pay his bills? Because, I mean, it could be someone else on the side. It could be, and he could be just using you to pay the bills. But once again, you have to sit back and you have to look at this because some things are just not worth it. Some headaches, you don't even have to have a headache about. Um, you know, it's just, there's no way of knowing if he is cheating, but all I can know is, you know, just stop moving in. Stop moving in, take care of yourself. Um, get to know yourself, get to love yourself. 
get to find out what it is that you would like that that you like the most what you would like in a man and what you would like how you would like for him to treat you because there is someone out there that will treat you right you just have to first learn to love yourself this program is brought to you by earthblendcoffee.global support our sponsor and we will be right back Thank, thank you. We're back. Um, the last thing I would like to talk about is the mindset. I believe that the mindset is very important. I believe the way that we think is very important because how we think will determine of how we act. It produces either if our thinking is positive, then our actions will be positive. If it's, if it's negative, it will be negative. So we have to think about what we're actually thinking about. And we also need to find, we also need to know that our mindset is like a gateway that produces that produces thoughts. A lot of times we uh, we look at TV shows, reality shows, and we want to be like them, you know. But it's not the right way. We have to. We are all made and created differently. We all have different perspective on life. We all have different life circumstances, situations. We all go through um, similar situations, but we're different people. So we really have to really think about what we're thinking about. You know, there the program that I used to watch a lot. Um, I don't know if I'm able to, you know, mention it on air, but it had a lot of um, adultery, a lot of killing, a lot of stealing, a lot of things like that. And I had to stop think. I had to stop watching it because I would find myself going throughout the day, and kind of thinking, reenacting, you know, thinking, thinking on those things. And so we really have to be careful because our mind is like to me, it's like a field, and whatever we find ourselves listening to or looking at or talking about, you know, is they're all seeds being planted in us. And it creates a harvest, whether that harvest is good or whether it's bad. Um, a lot of things that we listen to, you know, music's about killing and, and, you know, just things like that. I think that, you know, we should not feed ourselves like that. Um, today, you know, we talked about the different relationships from Deep South and Mr. Mississippi, you know, and to me it's kind of like the mindset of... Um, of uh, broken relationships, broken homes. We kind of have to find out where is the root of this problem? You know, are we trying to relive our parents' marriage? You know, are we trying to relive, what is it that we're trying to relive? Is it something that we want? Or is it something that we're used to seeing or we're used to hearing about it? Because a lot of us have grow, grown up in a um, dysfunctional home, you know, and we carry those things in life you know, thinking that this is the way it's supposed to be. And it's not supposed to be that way. We really have to be careful, um, you know, because we are supposed to live and enjoy life. And, you know, Jesus came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. And so in order to experience that type of life, we have to Think about what we, like I said, think about what we're thinking about because it's very, very important. I believe that so many of us are very offended because of the offensiveness that we see and hear on an everyday basis. I'm not saying that all movies are bad. I'm not saying that everything is bad. Once again, because you can have fun, it's just it affects us in a negative way in our 
in our reality, you know, in our real life, because it's not TV. You know, we can't live and interact the same way we see other people do on TV. They're getting paid for it, you know, and then some of it with the reality shows, they are, you know, their life is kind of, you know, jacked up. They have the money, but they're lacking peace. They have the fame, the riches, but they're lacking trust. And so we really have to find out our true identity. And the only real reason, the only real way, I'm sorry, to find that identity is to really get in the word of God and really think, of, think, you know, get a relationship with Jesus, find out what it is because he has already predestined your life. A lot of us forfeit our lives. A lot of us settle for things that, that are just not even worth selling for when we can have so much more, we can have so much peace, we can have so much joy, happiness. So I just really hope that today, um, that I really helped Deep South and Mr. Mississippi. Um, and I will, I would really love for you to email or call live to give us an update. You know, if you have any more questions or anything else you would like to talk about, please feel free to ask me. I'm here, I mean, I have, I'm here. If I can help you, I will help you. So, you know, once again, we just have to live life and we have to live it to the fullest while we have a chance because we only have one life, one life to live here on earth. Um, I want to thank you once again. Thank you so much for joining me on this show. And I really hope to see you all real soon. I hope to hear from many more people. Um, and I'd like to say this one last thing as an encouragement. Don't be shy about your story. Once again, your identity will remain anonymous, but don't be shy about your story because other people have similar stories and they might be kind of, you know, shy or afraid to even share their story. But while you're sharing yours, they will, you know, maybe hear something that they need to hear that will help them, that will carry them to the next level. So thanks again once. Thank you again for joining me on Dear Alicia Coffee and No Tea. This program was brought to you by EarthBlendCoffee.Global. If you have not already ordered your coffee, please do because it's fire roasted, it's delicious, and very healthy for you. Thank you. Until next time. Bye.